this uh, glorious victory and then negotiations mm -hmm. until uh, yeah, we uh, had the complete liberation of Sinai in 1982. Let me take your memory about this. First of all, I am very honored to speak today about uh, Sinai liberation after 40 years. And I was very pleased to witness uh, the October War and the liberation of Sinai. Uh, for me, this was an, an unbelievable uh, event that we take, first of all, part of Sinai by our army and to cross the Suez Canal with all the, uh, the castle that were built there in Sinai by uh, the Israeli state. Uh, and then after that, through negotiations, uh, we took back the rest of Sinai. So we did not lose many bloodshed except during the war. So that's uh, a point that we have really to pay tribute to uh, late President Anwar Sadat. Uh, this charismatic leader uh, was witnessing uh, two things, peace and war. First, yes, to be strong, Europe. and then uh, to negotiate after threats, not from weaknesses. And so these are lessons that I learned uh, about uh, October 1973 and the liberation of uh, our beloved Sinai. But let me, uh, first of all, um, take you back a little bit about Sinai, because f for many Egyptians, and even outside uh, Egypt, people know uh, Sinai of two things. Uh, the northern side, which is politically known for crossing Gaza Strip and uh, Rafah and all the, the problems that we were facing before uh, today. And the uh, southern part, which is basically a, a world-class attraction for tourism. But uh, historically, and that's why, I, if you allow me to give or shed some lights about, Please do. Uh, about why, why Sinai, why for, Sinai? For, Indeed. for Egyptians. It's not just about liberation of Sinai, but it is, we took very precious part of our history as Egypt. Uh, back uh, 1800 before Christ, BC, it witnessed the arrival of the father of all prophets, Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I'd like to speak about that. <laughs> and uh, Ibrahim is also Ibrahim in Judaism, and yes. he's also Abraham in uh, Christianity. And he's the father of all prophets. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's first of all, you know, that, that Sinai is uh, the place where uh, the father of prophets married Hajar. And I was just looking at the history of, of Sinai and realized that Hajar was living in Kantara, which is one of the cities in Sinai. So it witnessed the marriage, which out of which came Ismail or Ismail. And you know Ismail, one of the uh, uh, ancestors of, of Ismail or Ismail, is our Prophet Muhammad. Indeed. So this is, has, for me as a Muslim, uh, a, a very special place in my heart, Sinai. Of course, we all love the liberation of Sinai. We all love our army, and we are very proud of what they did in 73, and we're very proud of our diplomacy that at the end it actually took back Sinai. But second also, uh, we have uh, the Jabal al-Munaja, or known by Jabal Musa which in is which believed that Moses took, spoke, to God. spoke to God and he took the Ten Commandments, Indeed. the law of the Judaism religion. So that's number two. Number three, it is said that Moses and his brother, uh, Abraham or um, Harun. Uh, Harun, died in, in, in Sinai. And actually Harun or Abraham uh, is uh, buried in Sinai. And unfortunately, Moses was born in the vicinity of Sinai across to, the Pal to Palestine. So that also is an important part of Sinai history. And thirdly, Christ and uh, uh, Mother Ma uh, Mary crossed Sinai in their holy trip to Palestine. And not only that, you have uh, St. Catherine Monastery, which is supposed to be uh, the oldest working monastery in the world. These all uh, facts give me the, the pride that we liberated part of our history, not just part of our land, our beloved land of Sinai, but also we, we actually liberated and we retrieved part of our history that is purely Egyptian. So that's why I'm, I'm very privileged and honored to speak about uh, Sinai liberation uh, as an Egyptian and as a Muslim. Indeed. So, uh, Sinai is... Um it's truly sacred. It's truly sacred. Not every inch, every uh, every 
very particle of its land and sand is very dear to each Egyptian. And uh, um, yes, indeed, we have witnessed uh, a very important uh, historical victory or war in the history of Egypt that led to negotiations led by pre late President uh, Sadat. And uh, we put our terms until the last inch followed by negotiations Taba. till the mark 91 or Taba and um, indeed long history. Uh, Sinai is very strategic uh, for Egypt and, uh, and that very particular issue gave uh, the world another uh, face to Egypt. How do you view that? How did the world receive uh, our uh, 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 or, or this stage of our history and how did they deal upon after uh, such uh, liberation? Well, Sinai was always a place of uh, troubles back even since 1956 and the, uh, the tri-invasion uh, of, uh, of Sinai. And so uh, the focus was always since the creation of the Suez Canal uh, Sinai itself was a very crucial part of the world history. And uh, you know that when uh, the Battle of uh, July uh, 1956 came, um, we know at that time that uh, they would not leave Sinai alone. So that's why uh, our president, uh, lead president uh, Anwar Sadat, followed by the lead president Mubarak as well, they were very keen to bring back uh, Sinai because it's a very important negotiation uh, point even until today when we talk about the power of, 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 uh, of Egypt in trying to solve the Palestinian uh, problem and um, colonizations as we all know uh, with our foothold on the Sinai Peninsula we have a strength to talk and to mediate between the Israelis and the Palestinians. So we know that uh, Sinai, although it is dear to us in terms of our GNP as well, gross national product, mm. in terms of our political power in the area, we know that uh, our uh, coverage and our uh, liberation of Sinai give us better negotiation terms when we talk with the outside world, whether during the Camp David uh, or whether we talk with uh, Yasser Arafat and his uh, deals that he did with the um, Israeli uh, state. Uh, so I think this came from a strength position because we are in control of, of Sinai. And so I think the world knows that uh, it is very dear to us, not historically as I presented earlier, but also in terms of the political role that Egypt plays in moderating now peace and peace treaties in the area. Can we speak a little bit emotionally? Um, um, because I am so emotional about this issue. But um, uh, this very dear uh, uh, memory of, uh, of us represents a role model uh, in facing in or in how Egyptians faced challenges in order to be able to achieve such a moment. Um, what lessons or what do we and our children gener and generations to come should be learning from such uh, uh, an anniversary, such a memory? And what should we build on that uh, occasion? I think lesson number one is perseverance. Uh, never give up. You know, after 1967, the Six-Day War, uh, the regime in Egypt at that time did not give up. It was preparing to get back. So that's lesson number one, pers perseverance. Lesson number two, do not negotiate from a weak position. And so this is lesson number two. And that's why even our beloved uh, President Sisi today, when he negotiated the terms, he negotiated from a strength point of view, that Egypt now is an economic hub. Egypt now is a political uh, power in the Middle East. 
So that's lesson number two. When we negotiate, we should not negotiate from mm. a weakness, but rather we should negotiate from a strength. Number three is you have to know your documents. You have to know your, your papers when you try to negotiate. And so, you know, the liberation of Taba in uh, 1989 came from a very prominent team of Egyptian lawyers and scholars who actually presented the all evidence for the arbitration, the international arbitration, and that's why the Israelis could not uh, present the same documents and the same proofs that Tawa is also part of Sinai. So that's uh, number three. When you go into negotiation, you should go with the full preparations. And I think we do the same thing today when we talk about the Renaissance Dam, that Egypt also is, is negotiating the right of water by Egyptians from historical documents. So that's why this is uh, the third lesson. The fourth one is that you should not give part of your land in whatever circumstances, even if it takes power and forces to get back part of your lands. Yes. That leads us to uh, today. And um, not today, but Sinai has been a very precious spot of our land and, and, and so but in a way or another it was a little bit neglected for some years and then and then it has been under complete focus yes let me take how did you read what uh, measures did the state do in order to be to prepare Sinai to integrate that part to uh, our uh, strategic vision for 2030 sure uh, let me give you some also history in terms of statistics about the Sinai Peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, you have to know that the Sinai Peninsula is divided into two governorates. The North Sinai mm -hmm. governorate, which uh, occupied the northern part of, mm -hmm. uh, of Sinai and part of the center of Sinai. And then you have the southern part of Sinai. And if you look at the map, uh, I know if we can get the map, uh, uh, can we show the map? I hope, uh, I hope they I can hope focus, can, they can put focus map. on it. Uh, when you look at the map here of Sinai, you can realize that uh, the, the minerals and the oil explorations, which is one of the important resources, natural resources mm. in Sinai, occupies the southern part, especially the western southern part. So we have so many oil uh, wells uh, explorations that are taking place, and that represents a good part of our GMP. But then if you look at the center part, where there are the mountains, it is full of minerals that you cannot find them all combined in one place. And let me give you a small example about what type of minerals exist in the central part. Mm. We have coal, you have magnesium, you have iron, you have uh, copper, you have uranium in this area, you have phosphate, you have heavy minerals, uh, you have sulfur, you have white sands that uh, is good for glass production. You have limestone and you have dolomite, which is good for cement production. You have gypsum, you have turquoise. We have mountains of turquoise. Imagine all of these minerals occupy the center part of Sinai. So the northern part is where the agric agriculture part, the fishery part, and then the southern part is where the oil part. And so when you look in terms of statistics about these two governorates, First of all, the northern part occupies 29,000 kilometers versus the southern part with the South Sinai governorate, it occupies 31,000 miles. The inhibited part of the northern side is only 7%. Why? Because the other parts are pure virgin lands for fishery and for mineral exploration. And then you have 53% of the southern part is occupied. So you can see the big difference between the southern part, and that's why tourism is there in Nueva and Taba and other areas, and of course, um, Sharm el Sheikh. Uh, unfortunately, the northern part is not occupied. So that's one of the problems that the central plan by the government under the citizen plan, which is the strategic plan for Egypt to reach the 2030 goals of Egypt developments. Uh, they want to increase the number of inhabitants, especially on the, st on the northern side. So the plan is in the next two years, the plan is to uh, make uh, almost 3 million inhabitants 
to dwell in the northern part of Sinai. Um, unemployment rate, believe it or not, it's zero under southern, and these are official statistics, they are not mine, it's zero. It means that all people who live in the southern part of Sinai are employed. Unfortunately, the unemployment rate in the northern side of Sinai is about 16 percent. Yes, but the northern uh, uh, part of Sinai because... Because of the oil explorations there, which is uh, attract a lot of people who work there, because actually of uh, higher uh, education universities that are established there, because of tourism in Dahab, Nueva, and Sharm el Sheikh. Yes, indeed. In fact, it also uh, import uh, labor and uh, human resources from other parts of Egypt. So that's why. But that's why Egypt is, or the government is keen and keen to bring more uh, people to the, the northern side. Mm. Let's look at the uh, breakdown of, uh, of these two governorate GMP. Before we do that, can we? go to uh, another report and then we come back sure. so we can have all the time after that sure. and uh, 462 housing development projects implemented in Sinai canal cities since 2014 let's watch <laughs> 